K.R. Glickman comes from Beverly, Massachusetts. She grew up in North Adams. She was born deaf to hearing parents who did not learn to use sign language. K.R. as a child was deaf and hadn't learned to lip read, which meant she never had any bedtime stories, although she said she always liked them. She went to school at Clark School for the Deaf and on there to Gallaudet College in DC and later met her husband, Tony Toledo, a professional storyteller. And in the bio, there are several references to him being very handsome. <laughs> Tony also became the bridge for KR between the deaf and hearing worlds. And Tony got her interested in storytelling. KR teaches sign language classes and pre presents a program called Deaf Awareness in You for elementary students. She tells her stories in American Sign Language with voice interpretation for the deaf impaired. When I asked KR for one of her most memorable moments sharing her story, she noted, for 30 years I've told stories as I teach ASL classes most of the time on the first day the students were so nervous having a deaf teacher. By the end of the eight week of classes, we were hugging each other and wishing class was longer. And finally, when I asked KR why share our art with others, she responded, when we share our art, people always learn something new. Everyone has their own unique story that needs to be told and needs to be heard and seen. And now I will step aside so that K.R. Glickman can tell her story to you. Please give her a warm round of applause to welcome her here in HM. Hi, everybody. We have the interpreter now. Did you understand what happened there? Yes. Some people say yes. What do you think it was? Tell me. It's OK. Eating dinner with parents. Mom and dad dinner. And drinking. And drinking. And drinking. And not understand. Related with dog. Wanting something. Wanting you can't get. One woman said one something you can't get. Oh, so yes, people are saying frustrated, want what you can't get, yep, yep, and everybody's talking, so I'm just there. So, yep, you guys got that, good, right. So I was petting my dog to my best friend. This is me as a little girl a long time ago. My name is K.R. now, and this is Karen. Mom always looked down at little Karen. Oh. At five, 
Mom thought, what to do? My parents were talking. Oh, where should we send our daughter to school? Oh, I know where. We could send her to Clark School for the Deaf. It's so important. It's just the top educational place for deaf lip reading and oral education. And they'll teach her to be a hearing girl. She can't hear, but she's going to be the same as all the hearing girls. That's what my parents were so thrilled with. So the school, it was forbidden to sign there. Oh. Are you ready to go to school now? And my parents, they didn't know anything about the world of sign. Knew nothing about deaf culture. And neither did I. So, going into school, at five years old, I went to the dorm and I stayed there all week long. I'd come home on the weekends, come home on the holidays, but now, when I was in school, my teachers would come up to me. Oh, hello, little Karen. Oh, you need your hearing aids. Here, let me adjust your hearing aid for you. All right, you've got to get that in there. Good. Now, we're going to learn math. Oh, oh no, we don't use the tissue for that. What, what did you say? Oh, no. It wasn't math time. It was speech time. Math, math, now you have to say this. Now blow on it and the classes were small. The teacher would go over and over and over again and practice and practice and practice, lip reading in the same curriculum over and over and over again every week. And you did the same thing and then here, now speak. Here, put your hand up, feel the breath. Math, now here, blow on that, that's good. All right, blow. You need more practice. I'm deaf. Oh, <laughs> uh, wait till you see this other one. Watch this one. Oh, all right now. I have a game for you children. It's no game. It's speech time. Now, listen, children. I'm going to say your name. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Please, if, can you not use Karen? Can you change it to my middle name, Rose? It's easier to understand that. All right. Now, I kept, when I was at school, I missed my dog, my best friend. When I was at school, I would go into the library, and one time I took this book off the shelf, contraband. I went to my favorite place in the whole world in the school, the bathroom. <laughs> and I get inside, and I had this book, sign language, A, oh, look at this, dog, dog, oh, wait, I can feel somebody coming in, flush. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
for nine years, my parents had no idea that I was signing. My teachers didn't know that I was signing. Now, I would go home, and friends of the family, they had another girl. She was deaf. Her mother and father were deaf. And they had a, she had a deaf brother in the family. When I would go over there and look at him, and they would take me to the deaf club with them sometimes. And I would show up and I would go over there. And the deaf clubs were always up these huge stairs. You had to go into the deaf club. And I looked around. And everybody was signing. There was young and old people. And everybody is signing. And I was trying to drink it all in. And I looked. What? The televisions had closed captions on them. Look at this, the tables, they were all round so everybody could see. It wasn't like long tables where people couldn't see. Now everybody could sit there and they could see each other signing. And what's that, what, they hold one finger up. Oh, it means wait a minute, oh, okay. And I started learning more. Oh, me, my, my name? N. What? It's time to go. Oh, I love it here. Bye. When I would come home and I saw the kitchen, there was newspapers all over the kitchen floor. Oh, your dog is sick. He's very old. Oh, bye. I will see you again. I got to go to school, but I get home on Friday. I'll see you again. And I get to school, and I'm coming back home. And I thought, I'm going to see my dog. Mom, there's no newspapers. Where is he? Mom. Oh, we had to put him to sleep. You put him to he's asleep, when's he going to wake up? Oh, no. He's dead. Dad, I didn't get to say goodbye. Monday, I was praying to see him. Tuesday, I was praying. Wednesday, I was praying. Thursday, I was praying. I want to see him and come home and see him. I'm always the last to know. You put him to sleep on Monday. Ah, my best friend. Why? My dog was 15. I was 13. Four years later, I was done with high school. Well, the eighth grade, I get done with that. I can talk. I'm ready to fit into the hearing world. I'm going to go to high school, public high school. No interpreters. And I went through it, and I made it through. I got to college. I was so thrilled. They had interpreters, yes. And I was learning more and more sign language, and I started to understand. I wasn't the last to know. I was right with everybody else. I was understanding. And people were signing and talking and what was going on and finding out. But. My throat was sore from talking. And I thought, I'm, I've got to get a job. I've got to get an apartment. I've got to get a boyfriend. I'm ready for this hearing world. I can talk perfectly. And one day I went in, go to a fast food place. I was in a hurry. And I said, oh, look at this. Oh, chicken. I love chicken. And I said, chicken. 
And they give me, I pay, I get my bag, and I walk out. Fish! (laughs) I went to City Hall. I filled out a form. Oh, good. My name? Karen. Karen Glickman, good. I get the paper back. Kathy, that's wrong. Ah. This talking is a weight on me. This flyer. An art exhibit, all by deaf artist. That's for me. I'm going to go check this out. Look at all this art. Look at all these people. Cool. Wow. Look at this. Oh, look at this picture. Oh, long time ago, the car had a license, and it says 1903. It had on it deaf and dumb. Oh, and then 1993, it just says, big improvement, deaf, a capital D deaf for deaf culture. Oh, that's getting better. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah, I felt the same. With your hands shackled because you weren't supposed to sign. You were only supposed to be an oralist when you were little. Oh, yeah, we were supposed to talk. I'm glad that's done. Wow, look. Oh, my gosh. Look at that huge painting. Look at all those people. They're sitting on a sofa, and their heads are all grayed out, like they're just talking, and their hands are on their lap, and then there's a coffee table. It's set up there like it's a gate. And then there's a girl, and her face is looking like a dog, and her body is setting like a dog. That's me. My family treated me like a dog. I'm done. Being a dog. That table, I'm going to make it round so we can all see each other. I don't want to be the last to know I'm done with that. Me talking, I'm finished. All those teachers, done. I am deaf. I am me. I am proud. Yes. My true voice is in my hands. KR and I do a program together called Unseen Borders, so that it's in stories in sign and voice. We say that it's stories that you can see and hear at the same time. We were just recently at the Topsfield Fair, and we were telling stories there, and they had a small little stage, and it was in the picnic area. Now, a lot of people, if you're a storyteller and you would get invited over to tell stories, people say, well, I'm just invited to tell the stories, and I'm going to stand here, and the people aren't there. But I go around for the five minutes before I go to start, I will go up to each table where it had kids and say, see that microphone over there? We're going to tell stories in five minutes. So when you get 20 kids over there, once you get started, then you've got 
30 and 40 and 50 piled around and they all come over to see. Well, we were in the middle of telling all these stories and I'm watching KR because if I'm interpreting for her, for her part, I'm not looking out at the audience as much as I usually do. And we get done and we thought, gee, it went well. The kids were paying attention. They were picking up signs. And this man came up and said, you guys were terrific. And we said, thank you. And he said, no, no, you don't understand. I said, what? He said, right behind the bales of hay, like two feet behind, there was a woman who fainted. Now, she was an elderly woman and she had her coat on and it was a warm day and she had overheated and we had two EMTs and we had two sheriffs standing there and we thought the kids would freak out if they saw everybody coming over. But the kids never turned around because they were so interested in listening to the stories and watching the signs. And I just said thank you and I said, I never noticed the woman over there either. <laughs> but it, I think that that's the power of the stories. And I was back on Thursday and I was telling stories myself and had some ghost stories that I was sharing with the kids. And then I got done and I thought, I'm going to go walk around the fair for a couple hours. On Wednesday, I couldn't stay with KR because I had to go to another storytelling on Wednesday afternoon. So I stop and there's a petting zoo at the Topsfield Fair and right beside the petting zoo, you can go for a ride on an elephant or a camel. And I always love to look and see an elephant because none of my friends have elephants and I so seldom <laughs> see them. <laughs> and it's nice to just go over and see this massive animal. And this one was a small elephant by standards of the ones that I've seen at the zoo. And then I watch the elephant and I go over to the poultry barn and I got to hold a four day old chick. It was me and about 10 10 year old Girl Scouts. And we're over there holding them and I was all excited and the chick was very happy to be there. And I walked over to the trade booth and they have this whole building where people are selling fences and jacuzzis and all manner of things. And there was a man in the corner who had this peeler. And he said, this is a Swiss peeler. Come here, watch, look at this. Oh, you told those stories. I thought you were really good, thanks. Oh, thank you. And he's in the middle of his thing. And he's showing all the things this peeler can do. And he had a giant turnip. And he said, turnips are so hard to peel. Here, watch this, and I can peel it. And then he gets all done peeling it. And you can tell he'd use this turnip for you know many, many different exhibits, because he was only doing like two strokes to show how easy it was to peel. And he says, Tony, could you take this turnip over to the elephant? And I said, certainly. So when I was done, I bought my peelers, and then I had this giant peeled turnip. And I so enjoyed walking down the midway, holding it as though I was soon going to eat it. And I could just notice people looking over. What in the world is that? But nobody was saying anything. And I get it over to the elephant, and the elephant's handler said, oh, thank you, she loves turnips. Her name's Beulah, but I can't just give it to her. The last two days, the turnips he's given me are very hard. She's a very valuable animal. She likes them so much, she will just pick them up and jam them into her throat. And there's a tiny chance that it would be like you or I grabbing a big hunk of steak and choking on it. So I have to fix it for her first and he set the turnip on the ground and got a sledgehammer and smashed it into a thousand little pieces. And I watched as the elephant picked up every one with her trunk and put it into her mouth. And I thought, how wonderful. I've never delivered a turnip to an elephant before. <laughs>
Finally, the inn with bath repast is visible beyond the pine-topped knoll. Now the future hill or stepped is past. My stubborn knees are laughing, light at last. Thank you. I want to die at the podium, hands held out to an audience which has just laughed at an unexpected joke or exploded in applause over my brilliant poem, which spoke their minds, which spoke deep truths. They didn't know they knew until I said them eloquent, elegantly. I want to die after someone in the admiring audience blinds me with a flashbulb, taking an action picture she will give my children, saying, your mother died with a smile so encompassing, it warmed the whole hall, and we knew she had finally said it all. and pear, apricot, then this.